Predicting the future, yes, a challenge, but there is one instance where you and I can do more than predict the future. We can drive it. It's called a test bed where car manufacturers take technologies off the shelf and they do a lot of trial and even more error and they come up with technologies that make it to future cars. Well, back in Santa Monica, we looked at something that was a test bed for a future electric car. Now it's our opportunity to drive it. Okay, so first things first, you and I already did a tech review on the EQXX back in Santa Monica where I regurgitated all of the bullets and numbers on the battery capacity, the electric motors, but most importantly, the construction and materials used in this test bed of a vehicle. You can check that episode out here. Instead, today, we are going to experience the EQXX. But things like this, they don't come to us wrapped up in a neat package. Rather, they start in a completely different form. Meet Emma, the far less attractive sister. But underneath, they're exactly the same. You see, the EQXX takes a lot of the bits from old Emma here. In fact, they had to detune Emma. They took the front electric motor out of it. I would show you to prove it, but the folks at Mercedes won't let me or you look up her skirt. So what we can do is drive Emma. So what are we trying to prove by putting the EQXX powertrain in a small crossover? This was like the perfect mule car for us because it got the same uh, power net than the EQXX, so it's pretty similar. And we needed a car for developing while we still was building the EQXX. So we started like with a blank piece of paper. This was one project, but two cars at the same time. It's just for us, it's like a working tool. So it's trimmed to the maximum efficiency. So let's try this. We're at a standstill here. There's no one behind us. And we're not on a public road, so we can yeah, do this. True. This is foot to the floor. Oh, it's not quick at all. There's a little delay there. You feel the heavy weight and even I feel that we are going up there? Yeah. Later on we can compare the same powertrain in the XXX. Yeah. It will be faster because it's uh, more lightweight and even you feel a difference to the aerodynamics. So right now I'm in D minus. Yes, so this is the middle level of, of the Raku. There's one more with the D minus minus. It seems like it slows the vehicle down more than a one pedal driving mode. So this is the maximum uh, braking torque from the powertrain we can get. So it's bearings and almost everything um, pretty optimized in this car. The last time you and I discussed this vehicle, there was a proposed road trip from Stuttgart all the way down to Cassis, 1,000 kilometers, and the whole concept was to prove the range. Well, they subsequently did that road trip in June, and they exceeded the goal, 1,082. Couple of moving parts on how they did that. Yeah, there was the drivers, there was the elements on the day, and there was this, the solar array. When we first met this car, the concept of the solar array was to add 25k indirectly to the range because this is not connected to the main battery that drives the electric motor rather it's connected to the 12 volt system that drives the accessories so what really this is trying to do is take load off the main battery and in proving the concept it proved it could exceed 25k of additional range through the solar array now putting aside all the geek stuff here it's time for us to drive the pretty one. That is a terrible horn. Yeah, it is. That is <laughs> horrific. Come on, you could bless this car yeah, with a better this is horn. Yeah, a traditional one. This is, that's like, it's Herbie. It's terrible. Yeah, it's like an Easter egg in this car. That, no, it's not good. <laughs> you need it to be like an old, like, Rolls Royce kind of horn, where it's like, oh, what is that? It's the it sounds like a disco. Yeah. Here we go. Boris, this is the reason I came over here. No, you're here. This is the third episode I'm shooting today, and this is the reason why I got on a plane and flew 12 hours. So yeah, this will be the highlight. First thing I noticed the minute I get behind the wheel of this car, it's more put together than one would think a concept or really a test bed is. Yeah, absolutely. So, Like it feels like a real car on the inside. Yes, this was uh, our job to create a 
high efficient car, but not as a compromise. It's not an experimental car. It's very close to production. So like the only things that I would say are don't look production. The vents here they look a little bit too crystal. Yeah, just like uh, advanced design. So yeah, when, you could tell that was rapid prototyped. It is. But the seats actually look totally cool. They're a little stiff, but I like them. Yeah, do you know the, the fabric we're sitting on at the moment? It's it's not leather. It's not leather, so the whole interior is vegan, and the white one is made from cactus. And then this is Dinamica, this is fake yeah, suede. Correct. That you're already putting in many cars. Yes, yeah, so an AMG model, so it's yeah. called. And the whole headliner is the Dinamica. Yeah, it's a nice touch. Synthetic uh, Alcantara, then we got um, 3D printed uh, from UBQ. This is like a household waste recycled material. Mm -hmm. And also <laughs> the big floor mats down below. Um, That's the throwback to the 70s. You got like a shag rug down there. Yeah, it feels like you're staying uh, in your bathroom, but it's very comfortable and they're made <laughs> from bamboo. Plastic bottles you can see here. So recycled That's this. PET yeah. bottles, fish from the ocean. Uh, we was using this in the in the Vision AVTR as well. Foot to the floor like we did in the in what did you call it? Lima? What's her name? I'm Boris. No, Lima, the, the other car. I know you're Boris. Uh, the, the, the Muley, the Emma. Emma, Emma. Emma was, okay. Yeah. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Eins, zwei, drei. <laughs> oh, it's not fast. It's definitely not fast. So, this is what an A class will be in 2025. At least propulsion. Yeah, maybe you, you can't compare when we would bring this into the production. Yeah. Maybe we'll add an extra gear, so this is just single gear, fixed gear. Mm -hmm. uh, trip, trip, so like, um, trip to the... Oh, basically yeah. translated, that means you're driving too fast. That's what the private polizai is saying to us. Yes, and um, with a two gearbox, you can add some extra accelerations for... Um, like the test you did. Is there uh, a portion of adding a second gear that enhances the efficiency? Mm, due to the efficiency, yeah, maybe because you can run in a bigger range mm -hmm. in your best point, and but it will also add some weight. And we tried. I mean, this is a, like a research car to um, create some new um, way of thinking with this, and that's why we go with, with one gear. So that coasting is 71, amazing. No, it's 72 already, and I would say when we're down there, it's a little bit above 80. If you're far so so is that the problem? <laughs> no, here's 100 the limit, so you're all... Oh, 100? Yeah, you can... What am I doing here? Yeah, speed up. Oh, you know what's interesting? Passing power is more noticeable for, the, for this platform than from a standing start. Yes, correct, because it's one gear and the, the best point is around this speed you're driving. Other also. production EVs that, that, that are not geared for performance, they don't have that kind of differentiation. And also what makes the difference with the very good drag coefficient, just less resistance, so it's easier to speed up even with not a high amount of power. Now I'm still not entirely certain why we're limited on speed here on a private proving grounds, but what immediately kind of hits me across the face in terms of driving dynamics, this is a bit more sorted than I would expect it to be. I, like I expected this to be kind of like a China doll in driving it. I've, I've driven concept cars and show cars before, and while this is not fully sorted, you can definitely can tell it's not fully production because you can tell up front there's some issues, some wonky bushings. But everything else feels robust. Yes, that's what uh, we try to realize, like a full car and reworked car, so not only like an experimental thing. Mm -hmm. And you see also here's a center console, like there's no need in an EV putting in a center console, it just adds weight, but we, we still want to realize some, some armrests and give some, yeah, some proper design. Also for the aerodynamics, uh, if we really want to do the very best we could cover the wheels but it will cost a lot of aesthetic and it will be not looking like a real car so this real car can drive more than 1000 or like with improved with the last road trip at 1200 um, kilometers in real world conditions and it's still looking like a like a normal car i'm noticing some of the benefit of the construction of the vehicle we talked about in santa monica that whole section in the back yeah the, the 
yeah. that how it's literally one piece, and then some of the other stuff was wrapped and prototyped, uh, 3D printed. And I'm noticing the feel, like the best way to describe the way the car feels in terms of solidity is it feels almost like driving a Lotus Elise. It feels like one piece of, like it's almost one tub. I'm not feeling the battery at all. Yeah, the battery's uh, very lightweight and also plays very good in the center of gravity. So 495 kilograms for the battery itself and yeah. also the one box. So the DC-DC and also the inverter. So it's 40% uh, less volume and 30% less weight compared to a, a normal 100 kilowatt hour battery. That's a big difference. I translated. That's uh, a drop from a 15, 1600 pound battery to about a thousand pounds. That's yeah. a huge That's difference. A lot. I mean, the, the whole car is weighing 1.75 tons. This is a uh, very lightweight for an EV. You yes. really don't feel, you don't feel this is an EV. I, I think that's the big takeaway I'm getting right now. You don't feel like it's an EV. I will say, you do feel some lightness in the nose, obviously because you don't have the front motor. Correct. So I'm sure if I were to get this thing up to speed, the nose would lift a little bit because it's probably so light. My guess is, what, 60, 60 back or 70 back, 30 front, something like that? Mm, no, it's it's 55 to 45, something like oh, that. Oh, wow. So pretty, pretty close. Okay, so some feedback for you. The, the steering is not as direct as I would probably want in a car that's more performance and oriented, but this obviously is not trying to be performance oriented. I guess the trick here is the visual. When you look at it, you expect it to be fast and handle a certain way, but you're going for a different goal in this whole... Yes, yes, correct. Uh, this project aims to doing like the perfect efficiency, the maximum range, mm. and also there are uh, different projects like maybe AMG ones for the maximum performance, mm. and Mercedes can do like mix those two uh, factors some in between for uh, future production cars. Mm. And what do we already know that is definitely going to make it into production from what we're driving right now? What components? So the powertrain and battery is pretty close to production and also um, maybe some design uh, things and also maybe some like the display is also close to production so not 100% like this but the concept itself so the design that, that's something when we first talked about this back in santa monica you guys were pretty specific of the design that's not what a real car will be no but now you're saying some of the elements will make it into a real car this design Yes, some, some smaller things um, will be yeah, developed and maybe some are a little bit different, but this is like the, could be a way Mercedes sees some production cars in the future. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, first and foremost, this was a lot more of a cohesive product than I expected it to be, which tells me the majority of this is going to be making it into production. Maybe not the way it looks and how fancy it is and some of the materials on the inside, but in reality, that propulsion system, I would argue, is going to underpin the future A-Class, which will be coming in 2025. That brings us to the wish list. And here I have a pretty big ask. The materials used in construction here, I would argue, is the biggest point of why this whole thing works and feels like a production vehicle and why it doesn't behave like an electric vehicle in the way it drives. So really the key to unlocking electric vehicles being more fun to drive is doing what they've done here where they've taken exotic materials and brought them together in a unique way and that kind of hides the additional weight penalty of the batteries and oh by the way making a battery that's 30 percent lighter i know this is incredibly expensive but this vehicle or at least parts of it are three years off let's say some of this stuff makes its way to a future s class and then it starts to trickle down from there you see where i'm going with this because if ev really has a chance it's a combination of fixing the grid first then the infrastructure, and then doing things like this. But I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I need to say goodbye to you because we have been spending a lot of time, me and Yanni, my Greek cameraman here, dealing with electric vehicles 
when there is a 540K streamliner over there that I'd rather drive. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.